Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jonathan Larson. He's with University of Kentucky's Extension Entomologist there. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Well, I'm glad you're here because I know it's been busy for you. It's been quite an insect year. However, today we're going to focus mainly on the fall army worm. Yes, the bug that ate Kentucky this year. It's a, <laughs> a caterpillar that seems to be driving everybody a little bit crazy. Okay, so let's talk about this. This doesn't happen every year, but fall armyworm is not a new pet to agriculture. It, it is not. Yeah, a lot of our agricultural producers will be very familiar with this insect. It's something we deal with on an annual basis. It's what we call a migratory pest. It is not something that overwinters in the state of Kentucky, but we get new swaths of it every year that are blown up from South Texas. So we've ended up with lots of eggs, now lots of caterpillars, soon there will be lots of moths, and then lots more eggs again. So it is a cycle, and it's something that we probably need to pay attention to. But first, tell me a little bit about how do I identify, how do I know that I might have fall armyworm? One thing that you can look for if you're looking at the caterpillar on the head of armyworms, there's a, an inverted Y. So the line goes down and then the, the arms would go out between or b behind the eyes. So you'll see this Y, it's kind of yellow or white on the head. And then if you look around at the other end of the button, there will be four black dots that are in a square shape. Okay, so let's explain to everyone about what the life cycle is for the fall army one. Absolutely. So it starts as an egg. The mom lays the eggs in these big patches. So this was something that happened a few weeks ago. Lots of people were finding these kind of odd, fuzzy looking egg masses glued on their house, on their lawn decor, on their cars, anything that was sitting still outside. And they can lay them in almost geometric patterns and they, they'll do a double layer sometimes. Those eggs will hatch. The caterpillars go through several stages of development as they feed. And then they burrow into the soil and pupate. So there'll be a pupa down there. And then out from that will emerge the adult moth, which will start the whole cycle over again. And so if a homeowner, if they were to see some of these egg masses, what should they do? I would advocate just scraping them off. A lot of people were finding them and kind of scraping them, destroying them, squishing them in some way. You can also, if you see little caterpillars coming out of them and they are noticeable when they first emerge, they have kind of a big black head when they first crawl out of the, the eggs. You can just spray that with soapy water and try and cut the problem off at the root. Um, other than that, you would just want to start monitoring your yard to see if you see any damage occurring later on. And we have seen substantial damage. These um, hungry little caterpillars are causing <laughs> major damage, even to the point where that lawn is going to have to be completely renovated. Yeah, that's kind of what we're telling a lot of folks is that you need to prepare to renovate. I know normally we advocate for people to renovate in the fall, maybe about 45 days before the first frost. But this year, if you do that, you're probably going to be feeding some of these new caterpillars. We are expecting one more generation of them to appear before the first frost. And if you start growing grass now, there's just going to be young tender turf, which they love to feed on, kind of waiting for them. And you're just going to feed that last set of them, unfortunately. So it might be better to wait until spring to do that renovation. Uh, I know that it will be kind of ugly and it's not the prettiest lawn to have that's been chewed up by caterpillars, but it is the best for your wallet to try and wait. Absolutely. Now, if people are out, one of the things that we tell farmers to do is go out and scout their fields, see if it's there, try to catch them early because that's when we can control. Do homeowners have that same option? Absolutely. So we would want people, if they see the egg masses, that's usually the indicator that in the next two to five days, the young caterpillars will be active in their lawn. And when they're smaller, they are a lot easier to control. And you can even use organic options against them if you're interested in that. So things like spinosad and BT work on the small caterpillars that would just be applied to the turf that's still around. Uh, if you had a lawn treatment earlier this year with something like Scott's Grub X, or if your lawn care company uses a Celeprin, you're probably still protected. Those products last all season long and they work against caterpillars as well as grubs. But if you had a, a midocloprid treatment or things like that, that's probably run out of juice for the caterpillar part. It's still working against the grubs, it's no problem there. But for caterpillars, you're gonna want a pyrethroid type insecticide or those organic options I mentioned on the actual blades of grass themselves. All right, and we do have some information available. You've created some nice graphics that we'll share with everyone, but if you have questions or if you suspect that you might have a fall army worm problem, we encourage you to contact your local extension office and we'd be happy to help. Thanks Jonathan for visiting with us today and we appreciate you watching the Farm and Home Show. Have a great day.